Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Bayonetta 2. Let us show those wonderful two verses that I managed to miss because I was a very huge idiot. One of the verses is verse number three. After Loki ends up creating that wonderful tsunami, you want to head backwards. Don't worry, the timer does not show up during the tsunami. In fact, I think that the tsunami actually just passes by, which is weird. But once you actually manage to complete this verse, you just go back as normal. It's pretty confusing, and it's a verse that you wouldn't really think to, you know, go back to. Now off to the next one. Once you've entered the cathedral or whatever, you head right back outside and then these guys just show up out of the water. I don't get this. This is confusing and it just baffles the hell out of me. Like they seriously just fly up and just say, hey, how's it going? We're, uh, we're, we're the verses that are going to kick your butt or attempt to. And we're doing a very terrible job, I might add. But whatever. You know, it's actually something I didn't realize, and I'm not sure if it's... Eh, no, never mind. I thought it was a scene thing. I thought my health was going up as I was in witch time. No, it wasn't. Alright. And now I decided to also show the last fight that I did, because why not? Because I actually did better this time. I'm happy. Ah, uh, that is very satisfying. Anyways, and that is all the verses in the uh, Remembrance of Time. I hope it helps you guys to be able to figure out where the hell they're located, because to be honest, I surely end up always forgetting where they are, but whatever. Now onwards to Chapter 3. Paradiso, the Gates of Paradise. And... This is chapter three, which is a boss fight now, because, yeah. So there's no verses here, it's only just one one thing that you have to worry about, which is just the boss. Fantastic, no? I mean, eh, uh, you know how bad it is. Sometimes there's also just one important verse where it's just, you know, just a boss alone, and that's really about it. I think there's only like, what, like three? main bosses or four I could be wrong I don't know I forget but anyways enjoy the glorious cutscene don't just walk into Fimbleventer we're going to have to be creative love if we're ever going to make it look over there that's the Cathedral of Cascades it was used for ritual worship of the mountain inside there's a device that can build a bridge to the heavens it will take us halfway up Fimbleventer an express pass. Right, love? Seems something finally came to mind, little one. While you're in the remembering mood, you wouldn't happen to know where the entrance to Inferno is up there, would you? Inferno? You must be in some shit if you're volunteering to go there. Let me put it this way, love. Once we get to the mountain, you'll get your choice of going up or going down. Fimbleventer doesn't let you just stick around. And which way will you be going? Me? <sighs> What's the matter, little one? Scared of what comes next? Shut up! Just get me to the mountain! Little one! Get away from me! Alright, now it's time to face against Glamour. And I have to say, 
the cutscene for when these guys are introduced is not really as interesting as in Bayonetta 1. Only because, as I said before, they're not focused on Bayonetta in this game. We're just in their way. They really just want Loki for some particular person, some particular person named Lupitor. Mm, I wonder if he's such a fantastic person. I hope we get to meet this guy. He's probably going to be the most wonderful person in the entire game. Anyways, Glamour here, the first phase anyways, will be sending a whole lot of buildings after you. And the only time you'll be able to get to attack is when she does this move. Use Witch Time to stop her for a few, and then you can whack her in the face. I will say this, I have yet to found a method to be able to killing this boss quickly or to rack up a very decent combo. Damage wise is pretty easy to do once you get past phase one of the fight. Phase two is relatively easy to dodge. But phase one, I usually take some pot damage from the building alone because sometimes the dodge doesn't really work. So I'm not going to say that the dodging system is perfect, but usually that's my fault of getting hit. I never get hit by Glamour herself because, to all honesty, half of her attacks are all telegraphed. They're not really, you know, pot shotted. Like, the only time you'll probably get hit is probably her tail because you're not expecting it. You think that it's probably not going to hit you, but it's like the only thing that's, you know, how you're supposed to really avoid that, even though you probably can clearly see it almost coming towards you. Now she starts to copy the Water Angel from Bayonetta 1, except the difference is, is that it's not, you're not really heading towards her specifically. You're just doing the same old thing, just dodging buildings, using Bat Within, even though I think if you didn't have Bat Within, they, trying to dodge those things would probably be a little bit more difficult. So be sure to have Bat Within. But then again, in the first chapter when you end up having enough Halos, you get to buy Bat Within anyway, so who cares? Alright, so after a few hits from Glamour, you'll be able to transcend to the second phase. But for right now, she's going to just constantly try to attack you. There's no real true opening for Glamour for phase one. So... And it also doesn't really matter. Well, actually, no. I'm not sure if it matters how much damage you take out of her before you get to Phase 2. But you'll see what happens to Phase 2 as to why it won't really matter specifically. So, once you've done enough, you'll soon start to see the wonderful light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, thanks, Glamour. I get hit here. I thought I dodged that, but no, I got hit. Thank God we can fly, and welcome to the Gates of Paradise. You know, you think it would be called Gates of Paradiso. Now, this is the second phase of Glamour. We have multiple Glamours, except you kind of can tell which one is the real Glamour and which one is not. The one that's real is the one with the health bar. <laughs> All right, now for this phase two, Glamour has only like three attacks. Well, it actually has multiple attacks. It has a claw swipe, which you can dodge very easily. It has a feather move, which the second one's gonna do. It has a bite move, which is also not that hard to dodge. It's been doing that. After you've done enough damage to the first one, it'll drop down. And the second one will showcase its another attack, which is the feather move, which is also very easy to dodge as well. I think the goal to be able to actually get the perfect time for this fight is to probably utilize certain abilities properly. Because as I said before, I don't think the um, katanas have a good damage output compared to the guns. So I probably should have used the gun since, you know, fist is always usually better. But half the time, you don't have the capabilities of always usually attacking. After you take out those two Glamours, you'll fight the main Glamour herself. You can tell this one is different because this one's actually fighting you directly. And as usual, Song always ends up changing depending on how far you got into the fight. Now, the thing is about Bayonetta 2 is that it blows its load with boss fights very quickly. And... You guys will see what I mean in chapter 4. 
As of right now, you won't see it here because this is not as interesting as, you know, the other boss fights. Oh, another thing. You guys may have noticed as to why Bayonetta runs at 60 frames per second compared to Bayonetta 1 where it didn't run at 60 frames at all. Um, the reason for that is that I like to think that since they took out the quick time events, which nobody liked, they decided to make it so that everything is automatic. Now, most people will complain, uh, before I mention, when she goes in race, she'll do four claw swipes. When you dodge the fourth one, you will be able to witch time and be able to attack her. But anyways, um, they got rid of the quick time events, which probably end up allowing the game to be able to run at a very smooth 60 frames per second. Now, don't get me wrong, the quick time events can be, you know, hit and miss, aside for the ones that, you know, had, like, building crashes and also cutscenes where they wanted you to dodge. But the quick time, there are some quick time events for this game, but they're not as, you know, if you don't do them, you'll die automatically type of situation. You'll probably just take damage, which, in all honesty, it really doesn't matter because if you take damage as well, you kind of still lose the ranking. But I don't think that the quick time event sections count towards a verse, so that's probably why it's not really much of a big deal. And Glamour here is almost dead. She's not really hard of an angel to fight. In fact, one, two, three, and four. Her attacks are, you know, not really that interesting. But anyways, time to finish her off. I don't recall asking for your permission. Oh, and I was wrong about our final destination. Going down. <laughs> yeah, but now they're attacking us even before they had get sent to Inferno. You know what I always find that's weird? We never meet these guys in Inferno, in Inferno form anyway, so it's a bit odd. But anyways, that's the end of Chapter 3. Yes, that was an entire boss fight. So until next time, folks, we'll be heading to Chapter 4 where the two, the two meet. I've been CCX. I'll see you guys next time. Laters.